Hello, welcome once again to Fantasy Fiction Focus. Our guest today from the heart of beautiful British Columbia is uh, Christine Perrin, uh, author of the Warp World series. Welcome. Hi, Simon. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, uh, this is all about you, of course, and talking about you and your work. So tell us about this, uh, this uh, Warp World. Very intriguing. Okay, well, Warp World is a series of books. There are three of five out now. I actually co-author them with a writing partner who lives in Texas. His name is Joshua Simpson. We started working on the series in 2009. The first book was published in 2012. And the premise of the series is that we have two protagonists, a male and a female, Sag and Emma. Uh, Josh writes Sag, who's our male protagonist, mostly. I write Emma, the female protagonist. Emma comes from a very primitive, but very lush and rich world, much like British Columbia. And Sig comes from a dying planet, and his people have to uh, essentially pirate other dimensions. Uh, and the book opens with him arriving on Amma's world. This is his first mission as a cultural theorist. He's here to uh, steal and pillage from her world, and of course, they end up working together, and chaos ensues. This is very interesting. They are working together, but you're also working together with another author who writes the male roles and you write the, the female roles. It, 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 how did this come about in, in the first place, this collaboration? Well, it, it started with uh, Josh actually approached me. He had found me through my blog that I write, and I am fairly nomadic, so I was living in the Cook Islands at the time. And uh, so he found this blog, and I mentioned in it, often that I write professionally and he wanted tips to become a professional author and we struck up a friendship uh, eventually emailing back and forth and he said I have this idea for a short story would you be interested in collaborating on it with me and I said no absolutely not <laughs> I have real writing to do uh, and he was politely persistent he finally got me to look at the story idea I said, that is fantastic. And he had an idea, he had a, a, a premise, a world, and a protagonist. And I said, let me create a protagonist of my own and a world of my own. Let's throw them together and see what happens. And about 300 pages into it, I said, I don't think we're writing a short story anymore. And, and that's how we got started, essentially. And, and uh, the story literally to kind of life of its own. And, and we decided at some point we had to make this a, a formal business arrangement and we were going to go after publication. Well, this is very interesting. How, how is it doing? How has it been received? You know, it's been really well received. And um, we independently published. That's the other thing, too. We went the traditional route. We had a, you know, the big New York City agent and it got shopped around to all the big publishers. and. We had already, this was when independent publishing was really starting to take off. And we had already discussed that as our, our plan B. And the feedback we got from the manuscript was almost universally, great story, love the writing, we can't market this. And so we thought, you know what, we can market it. So we decided to write it, to do it ourselves. and. Uh, I was very uh, leery about it. I still, you know, had all those stigmas in my head about what self-publishing was. Uh, but it came out, it got a tremendous response from people who weren't my <laughs> parents or friends. And uh, actually one uh, honorable mention in uh, the Eric Hoffer Commercial Fiction Awards. It uh, was finalist for the Montaigne Medal. and. What has been sh most shocking to me is how much kids like it. I really didn't think it was a book that young adults were going to like, you know, teens and uh, kids as young as 13. And I, I have a fan letter from a 13-year-old girl who's just in love with the story. So that, that really shocked me. So, yeah, I'm super thrilled. I, I, I'm so happy people love it as much as we do. Now, you mentioned, of course, the Warp World series. So how, how many uh, books are there? There'll be five. 
in total. The third one just came out at the beginning of March, and we're busy, busy, busy working on number four. Uh, our goal is to put out one book a year, and we we streamlined our process so we get through them pretty quickly. We uh, basically the minute that one book goes to an editor, we are already outlining the next book. So, so obviously, so we are close to getting finished with the with the, with this project. Then I guess is, will there be more adventures in the same world, or will you be doing something after this, uh, either with your uh, writing partner or on your own? What what are your plans? Well, we 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 talked about either doing a prequel or or taking you know another part of the universe. But I think you know by that time we we love the universe, but we're we're itching for something new. So we'll probably move on to other. Their projects, and we might do some standalone work. Um, I would like to do. I, I have a solo project of my own that I'm working on right now. Uh, some young adult fiction that I hope to have done by August, and so I'll be shopping that. And uh, yeah, we're we're just uh, we love working together. So we'll always be doing projects together, and and I think I would also be doing projects of my own. At the so it sounds like you're going to be pretty busy there. Now, is this is this sort of a genre uh, one you've always been interested in, uh, in some way or another? I love science fiction. I mean, I think most science fiction and fantasy authors would say the same. And I mean, I was what seven years old when Star Wars came out, which <laughs> I hate to say dates me, but and, you know, so there was Star Wars, and the the space shuttle missions were just first launching. It was just it was such an exciting time uh, technologically to grow up in and really inspiring. So yes, I've always loved this genre. Now you have not of course been in the space shuttle yourself as far as I know, but you have been close to being uh, sort of a real life space person and a real life uh, uh, hero I guess as well, haven't you? you? You've got some background in films, haven't you? I do. I worked as a professional stunt performer from 1993 to 2003. I have worked on a few uh, science fiction and fantasy shows, including uh, I did an episode of Stargate. I did several episodes of Andromeda. I worked on The X-Files. I even worked on a Stephen King film. Uh, have any of these experiences helped you with the, with the writing of, uh, of, uh, of the series or any other stuff? It, it all helps, and particularly uh, Warp World is a very action-heavy series, and so it, it helps having a knowledge of uh, different types of action sequences and choreography. I have been known to drag my husband, who was also a stunt performer, into the kitchen to choreograph action scenes. <laughs> we will act them out. Um, and, and also just understanding uh, Plausibility, you know, what can work and what cannot work in real life, you know, because I've seen things done. So I know what's physically and humanly possible and what you, you know, you need some wires and rigging to accomplish if you're actually going to do it. So would you say that's the most difficult or uh, part of the, of the writing process for you is the action sequences or is it? Character drawing, or is it uh, description? What, what's the what's the trickiest thing that you have to do to uh, to do when you're writing the stories? Well, you know, um, I, I, Josh and I each have our weaknesses. I'll say, and um, we have a, a heavy military element in the series, and I would say that's definitely where I'm weakest. I, I understand one-on-one uh, -on -one combat. I understand how to write action sequences. I don't. I'm not overly familiar with the structure of the military and tactics and strategies. Uh, so I rely on him a lot for those sorts of things. He tends to come to me more for uh, the critters and the environment. That's the stuff that I love to write. I, I love uh, strange animals and strange environments, and I love how they all work together. So yeah, but no, definitely the military stuff is, is tough for me. Well, that's probably the same thing as a uh, sort of non-fiction people, I suppose, that they have to do a lot of research into, into different things. I know that uh, uh, with fantasy genre, especially, you, you you cannot really avoid 
having to write about weaponry. I think that's the thing, swords and how and how the, how people fight with sword. We've all seen it on TV, but describing a sword fight, not so much fencing type swords, but these big, heavy medieval swords, it, it's difficult to do. So, so um, yeah, you also do the um, uh, these are the female characters you're writing, and he's doing the, your partner's doing the male one. Is is, is that Simply because you're female and he's male, or it, could could you not write the male character? Actually, um, I, I should qualify. I, I write most of the female protagonist uh, scenes and dialogue. He writes most of the male, but we have crossed over, and all of the secondary characters are completely up in the air. It just happens that that's the way it started, and so we were most comfortable writing the voices of those characters, but we definitely, we, we cross genders now and then. And I, I like writing male characters. I'm very comfortable writing male characters because I've, you know, particularly doing stunt work for so long, that was a really uh, male dominated industry. So I'm, I'm, that's the world I'm comfortable in, is a very male world. Yeah, it sounds as well like it's, it's obviously helped you with, uh, uh, with with writing these things. Now, you do other things as well as writing and, and presumably stuff work too. You, uh, and you mentioned as well, I, I, before I forget, you mentioned that you would said, yeah, yes, we can market this, you and your partner. How, how, what have you been doing to get this, uh, this, this wonderful uh, series out to the world? What sort of techniques have you been using? <laughs> well, that, that's a great question because... Um, it, it's really been learn as you earn experience for me. Uh, there was a bit of a gold rush with independent publishing when it first became popular because there wasn't enough content out there. So if you got on that bandwagon early enough, you could do really well. About the time we started was when things were, were starting to taper off and, and our book really I can see why the people who rejected it said it wasn't marketable because it isn't. It, our books aren't small; they're not uh, one-offs. They they have fairly complicated plots. Uh, so what I've learned since we, you know, initially launched the book is that it's not about any particular tip or trick. It's about just constantly putting out good quality material. It's taken about three years. We're just now starting to build some traction. And of course, I'm on social media. We run promotions through Goodreads. We do all the usual stuff. Um, but discoverability is a huge problem for any new author starting out. And so we've had to step back and look at our goals and our strategies and say, you know, our best time spent is time spent writing the next book. And we also write, you know, short stories that go along with the books. There'll be another one coming out soon. And we give those away for free. Uh, but we don't we don't give our books away. We price them the same as traditionally published books. We, we have always maintained that our books have that value. So, no, we're not selling tens of thousands of copies, but I know that we're doing as well as some of my friends who are new authors publishing traditionally. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> Something's working somewhere. Well, I think that's the thing with with with, the, with independent publishing and self publishing and Amazon and eBooks and everything else. It's it's all so easy to do this now. Anyone can do it. But like you say, that's the discoverability, visibility, whatever you want to call it. Is is there are an awful lot of books on Amazon or anywhere online, and you have to get noticed. But it sounds like you're doing everything. Um, that you can. Now, you also had mentioned earlier that you are a, uh, a radio celebrity as well, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not sure celebrity is the word, but yes, I, I co-host a morning radio show here in Nelson, BC uh, on Kootenai Co-op Radio. You can actually find it online. Every Friday morning at 8 a.m., my co-host and I, Anthony Sana, we sit down and we interview to, uh, local folks or people passing through that are having events in the area and it's great fun. It is so much fun. It, it is the one day of the week I look forward to every week. Do you, do you get to mention your uh, your uh, What World series and other work uh, on this show or is, it, uh, is that uh, forbidden? 
Oh no, we we've mentioned it, and and Nelson is a small enough town. Everybody kind of knows everybody. I won't call myself a local celebrity, but I'll say people here know me pretty well, particularly people in the writing community. Uh, but if I have something to advertise, I, I did a workshop recently for independent publishing, and so I, Anthony essentially interviewed me while I was sitting there beside him. So, um, but I don't need to mention it a lot. You do, you do attend uh, you attend uh, conventions and, and, and other sort of uh, writer type events and uh, for fans and readers and things. You do those sort of things. I've just started and I love it. I just love it. I I think I mentioned I've, I'm pretty nomadic. So uh, since since my husband and I left the film industry in 2003, we have lived in the Bahamas, Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico, the Cook Islands. Uh, different parts of DC, Florida. So my life is pretty hectic. It's, it's been difficult to commit myself to things. And, but in the last about five years, I've settled somewhat. And so I went to my first convention in 2012. That was Worldcon and had just a blast. I, I felt I was, I found my tribe at last. It was fantastic. Met just a ton of nice people. I went to World Fantasy, I went to VCon last year, and coming up at the end of April, I will be at the Creative Ink Festival in Brandon, DC. I'm actually going to be presenting a workshop there, speaking on a uh, panel, and doing some blue pencil sessions as well. So if people want to come out and get their work lovingly torn to shreds, <laughs> I'm there for that. Well, so, you, so you're doing all the right things then, by the sound of things, and it's. Uh, it's but you, you were mentioning earlier that uh, the most important part uh, with the series, anyway, was to keep uh, doing the writing. And I was just curious with the convention side of it. Uh, you say you like doing the convention; it's a lot of fun and all the rest of it. What's the? Is it because it encourages you to focus on the writing? I mean, obviously, it's, we can't say. Oh, I made a wonderful contact. I met somebody who was going to turn my book into a movie or a new agent or something. What is what is the is the vibe that you get? Is it is it mostly just to encourage you in your uh, writing? You know, I'll be perfectly honest. I didn't know what to expect, and and when I first when I was planning to go to Worldcon, I thought it was going to be a lot of networking and marketing, and and I mean that does happen to some degree, but mostly what I just found was it was so wonderful to be in a group of people where we could skip all the, the small talk, the getting to know you, and just jump into having weird conversations about strange things. And and you didn't have to worry that people wouldn't get your strange sci-fi references. Um, and particularly for me, I've lived in a lot of places over the last 10 years that are pretty isolated. The island I was on in the Cook Islands, 1,200 people maybe. Uh, mostly Cook Islanders. Nobody else on the island wrote that I knew of. I couldn't think of anybody who loved sci-fi. There wasn't a library. There wasn't a bookstore. Uh, so you can feel pretty cut off from people who share your common interests. Then you go to this convention, and there's everybody who loves all the same things you do. And it just sort of it fans that flame, I guess. It reminds you why, why you got into it writing in the genre that you did. I, yeah, I highly recommend to anybody to get out there. And I think you're probably right too. I think the main thing about these, the, the ones you've mentioned as well, is that they are for a specific genre, probably more even than, say, a bunch of romance writers getting together or a bunch of journalists or something, or even children's writers, uh, because children's writers can be anything from picture books to teen books and everything in between. But at least, as, as yes, you're meeting people who uh, have, uh, it, well, not long, they don't only write science fiction and fantasy, they're fans of, of Star Trek and Star Wars and goodness knows what else, and they're, they're familiar with the references, as you say. So, so you'll be doing some of that in the future, you said, right? Oh, absolutely, yes. I, I plan to go to, of course, the Creative Inc. Festival coming up. Everybody should go to that. Uh, and then I'll be attending Worldcon in Spokane because I can actually live there for the first time ever and then after that I don't know we'll just see what the budget allows that is the only drawback it, it does require a, a little bit of uh, uh, money out of the pocketbook to do these things but well worth it yeah 
yes, it sounds like it's important. So, so you are busy then at the at the current time, uh, spring of uh, of 2015. You're busy uh, writing. What are you busy writing this very week? What are you What are you up to? <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, working on book number four of World Worlds. We're uh, we're writing and outlining sort of simultaneously. I'm working on my solo manuscript. Uh, like I said, the young adults are working title is one. Uh, that's going to be well, I call it Lord of the Flies, but with an all-female cast and with genetically mutated humans. Uh, of course, I'm always blogging. I, I blog on the website that we have for Warp World. We've got a series running right now all about uh, cultural conflicts, and we have uh, a bunch of guest bloggers that I'm uh, putting up on the blog. I blog on my own blog, which is the Coconut Chronicles. And, of course, you can always find me babbling on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> I never so you're, you're, you're out there then, getting your work out there. So there's no real reason why people should not have heard of you and should be buying your books by the million, really. Oh, the billions, really. I, I can't think of any reason why they wouldn't. <laughs> Well, you seem to be certainly uh, 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 very into this, and, and certainly making uh, making a go of it, and, uh, and getting your name out there. So, just, just as a final thing, I guess, uh, especially because you're in, independently published, do you have any uh, maybe just I don't know, lots of tips, probably for uh, aspiring people? But do you have one in particular, one thing, yeah, one pearl of wisdom for people? Okay, well, for aspiring writers, I mean, there's tons, obviously, but. Uh I would say my number one tip is not to be afraid of failure or rejection. Uh, my background in the film industry, I faced rejection pretty much on a weekly, if not daily, sometimes hourly basis. And rejection is, is where you learn what you're doing wrong how to fix what you're doing wrong, how to make it better. And if you can accept that, if you can understand that it's not about rejecting you, it's about rejecting whatever it is that you're producing or doing, if you can accept that, learn from it, make something better and move forward, you'll only get better and better and better. But you, and I know it's tough, writers, we hate rejection. It kills, it kills you. Um, but the earlier you start, dealing with that and facing it, the better you'll get. That's excellent advice. I've heard that many times about the, the, the rejection thing, but it's very hard for, to convince people. I think, <laughs> I, I think as you said, people do uh, sometimes think that uh, if someone's rejected their novel, their poem, their whatever it is, they're rejecting them as not only they're not only rejecting them as a, as a writer, they're rejecting them as a person. It's like, no, they just don't like this particular piece of writing and that sometimes they'll make suggestions. So that, that is excellent, uh, excellent advice. So, so yeah. on that note, I suppose I should let you do some writing because you're not getting anything done while you're talking to, to us here. So uh, thank you, Christine, for your time. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to maybe t chatting to you down here again when the, uh, when the uh, uh, series is all finalized and everything. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me out here.